regular, regular, regular features. A regular, regular, regular features. A regular, regular, regular features. A regular features of show. Hello, I'm Joe Scrabbles, and these are my bosom buddies. Oh. <laughs> Steve Hogarty and John Logblad. Oh boy, I love being one of the bosoms in this buddy patrol. <laughs> if I'm a bosom and you're a bosom, what are you? The brassier. Ah, I, I contain was... you to keep you from mischief. <laughs> the... That's, I assume, what they're for. Ah, the tit cleft or cleavage in modern parlance. (laughs) This is the Regular Features Podcast. The podcast that is exactly the same every week. Yes, indeed. For better or for worse, we're committed now. We're never going to change. We did, to like it. we did it way before that podcast where they just watched one movie every week. Which isn't that smart, is it? No. What the fuck? Do you remember that? There's a podcast where they just watch one movie every week. We do this exact same thing every week. Make up our own well shit. before. This is a world of invention. And what they do, just fucking sponge off other people's creations. Dick. Disgusts me. Yeah, us doing the same thing every week is a joke on the format because we do we never repeat a feature oh is that true yeah that's that's the that's the implicit joke of the oh. intro it's the only podcast that begins with an explanation of what the podcast is that is diametrically opposite to what it actually is QED perhaps it's counterintuitive <laughs> and alienating to new listeners but we're sticking with it because <laughs> it's the best thing we've got this week like every week I'll be giving you my top 8 tips to picking out the best Christmas tree from the Christmas tree shop I will be displaying an act of solidarity and unity among every British person on these fair aisles I shall be giving back some money to a reader who is a patron in the most loving and ungracious way possible. (laughs) If you genuinely did that every week, we'd be broke, Log. Well... So stop it. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Sucking on my features like you wanted me. Calling me all the time. I'm trying to check out my frizzy features behind all the time. Regular features. Regular features. Regular features. Oh. I've got a cold. <gasps> How does that feel? Uh, very frustrating because I've been taking anti-cold measures. I've been actively using antibacterial hand gel to the point where people look at me and say, oh, there's Steve with his antibacterial hand gel. And last night in a dream, I took it out of my pocket and used it. So even in my dreams... <laughs> I'm cleaning my hands constantly. <laughs> what were you doing in the dream? Well, I was, which was... Our very own Lady Macbeth. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting on a sofa. I, I had a cat on my lap. Mm-hmm. And the cat retched at the smell of the antibacterial gel. Oh, so oh, then you no. had cat retch on your hands, so you had to double the dose. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good point. I know another dream you had, and it had to do with you <laughs> sunning your anus. Yes. Let's I... talk about it. Log wasn't hasn't listened to the last week's podcast yet, but there, I, I am aware that Instagram influencers have been pointing their butts straight at the sun. Yeah, but not just Instagram influencers, Log, but your friend Steve, <laughs> Steve, podcast impresario Steve Ogden, <laughs> and a me influencer. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing tonight <laughs> in the baleful light of the moon. So, <laughs> well, well, listen to last week's episode, Log. We cover find out it. What happens if you do it with, with the moon? <laughs> that wasn't e- that wasn't even a feature. That was just a chat we had. It was so good. And I'm feel, I seem to be repeating it verbatim. No, I love you. it. Uh, but yeah, you I said you would do it and provide us with a review. And I can't believe it's taken me lo- this long to remember that. Lo and behold, I did. And it was literally... Your low was beheld. <laughs> low was beheld by, by the sun. It was the first... Literally the first chance I had to do it. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was up there. It was out there. On, okay. the, on the roof of your block of... So flats? No. Or on, on the balcony? On the on the back of a flatbed truck you know, driving through Central. <laughs> Do you know what else is good? Oh, like a really weird teen wolf. Br- brilliantly. <laughs> this is why we're all on this podcast together. You've asked the same questions I have. I said balcony as well, and he rebuffed me. <laughs> I didn't do it on the balcony because of the wind chill factor out there. It's not the, it's not appropriate weather to have your have your taint exposed to the elements. But I'm sorry, like, if you're on top of a van... I wasn't. That was a joke. Oh. <laughs> I was going to say. On top that, of a van being driven around central London with my ass pointed towards so the they'll sky. Be able, they'll be able to get a Good lock on you if you're moving around. <laughs> You'd have to expense that. 
I did it in my spare room through a window. So there was some greenhouse effect mm-hmm. going on, uh, which made it quite uncomfortably warm very quickly. And I also know why she only holds the pose for 30 seconds. It's because it's hard to hold on to your ankles and raise your ass up like yeah, that for, okay. for very long. It's just kind of a yoga move, isn't it? It is kind of a yoga move. Yoga for your yoni. I <laughs> felt... <laughs> That's what she says. <laughs> I I thought I'd I I could maybe do it in the downward dog position, but then uh-huh. I just thought I'm I'm prolonging something very ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and I I am late for work. Were any of 45 the forty five minutes? Were any of the claims about its health benefits and immediate health benefits true for you? Did you feel more creative that day? Well, I immediately jumped up and punched a hole in the wall and screamed seven book ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and then ran out the door. <laughs> Did you feel sexually charged? I had an unsustainable erection. <laughs> <laughs> Did you meet anyone from your soul tribe, I believe was the term she used? I didn't meet anyone from my soul tribe, although maybe... All of my work colleagues are ah, your soul tribe. Yeah, maybe it made me realise that the soul tribe I was looking for was they right next to me all along. What if they were all? What if everyone in that office had sunned their ass this mo- that morning, and you went in, and everyone knew, but no one knew? Everyone be was beaming. Yeah, absolutely. I think if everyone beaming. had done it, everyone would have just sort of given an unspoken sort of like smile to each other, saying, you, "I know, you know." Yeah, you you've got more of a tan than yesterday. <laughs> there would have been a ripple through the office, yeah. and then someone would chant, "Rachel did it," <laughs> <laughs> and, and, not, and then everyone else denies it. And everyone says, "Rachel, you dirty bitch," <laughs> and then someone stands up and says, "Well, I did it too." <laughs> Well, then you're as bad as she is. <laughs> the, yeah, the reason I was reminded, because you sent me a text during the week saying you'd had a dream that someone had pictures of us having sunned our anuses. Yes. And I didn't even do it. I had a, vi- like a, I had a vivid dream that we had, as a joke, like maybe for the podcast art, um, sunned our so is, anuses. Is it, is it we as in me and you, not the whole podcast me cast? And, me and you, Joe. Yeah. We had thought that our genitals weren't visible somehow. Oh, I see. <laughs> By pointing our assholes at a camera lens. So, so we like, thought it would be asshole only. Yeah, and yeah. that will be okay. Like we pushed our two asses way too close together. Yeah. As if just the top of the asshole would get around. Yeah, I can okay. visit I can envisage it. In the image we're both <laughs> smiling happily at, at Oh yeah, into the into the camera. But um, our balls and penises are fully visible. Oh. And that's that's what embarrassed me for some reason. <laughs> That's really good. And it was one of those dreams where I woke up and for about three minutes I thought that it had happened. And, and I called felt, the police. <laughs> I called the police. <laughs> oh, and myself. And, and my parents. <laughs> Shut the up. fappening. <laughs> it's going to happen again. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, the 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 sunning of the of the asshole and taint really went to my head in more ways than one. It seems interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, squirty, squirty, you squirty, birty. Ooh, squirty, squirty, you dirty, birty. A gentleman in these troubled times, uh, I find that searching for unity in the Great British public is really a tonic for my daily existence, and I search for it on the reg. Mm. I look for common causes unblemished by bipartisanship is that what it's called tripartisanship any old any old partisanship i don't want it get rid of it i want unity and i think this week i found one for the for the british public you found one unity one instance of unity (laughs) and it came it came through odd means a friend of mine posted on his instagram story a picture of a menu item. Steve's dick and balls. <laughs> Steve's dick and balls. And everyone agreed, gorgeous. Um, it's not a flattering angle to see the dick and balls from. No, because they... Yeah, there's no platform for them. They're just no. they're just there. But you would see how pert they were mm. if they stood or flopped. Anyway, <laughs> uh, a friend of mine posted... Also, on the- I know what your dick and balls looks like according to my brain Oh, now. shit. <laughs> 
We'll talk about it later. That means you stand the very real problem of having cognitive dissonance when he shows you his dick and balls in a second. (laughs) In an act of extreme unity, I will show you them to bring your mind's eye and mine. Wow. Mine, my... Bell end together. <laughs> Collapse the dream Inception style. Oh shit. Maybe this is still the dream. Imagine, <gasps> imagine Killian Murphy just got his dick out and the whole film ended. <laughs> can I look over your shoulder while you drop your trousers so I can see what you think your dick and balls look like? That would be weird. Because, yeah, there is that weird thing where you can't tell. A mirror makes it look. Fish eye lens. Bigger? And yeah, I, I only have funhouse mirrors in my house at the crotch level. Just a, just a layer of a strata of funhouse mirror for the old dick and balls. You get it just right. You can get it just, just two bell ends back to back with no shaft. <laughs> yeah, like on tube windows when yeah. your feet go up and down. Yeah, I love it. I've never thought about a dick doing that before. That would be cool as hell. <laughs> Right, a friend of mine went on Instagram and he posted a picture of a menu item from Toby Carvery. And I was intrigued by Don't it. I know him. Uh... Yeah. Uh, and I-, I looked it up and I discovered that there had been not insignificant discussion in September about this menu item and it had passed me by. I went onto Toby Carvery's Facebook page and I discovered a- 1,600 comments from good British folk almost all in agreement that this menu item was worth discussing. <laughs> that was the sole bit of you. They all thought it was worth leaving no, a comment. No, 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 no. I just don't want to I just want to I don't want to blow my stack here, guys. Okay. I'm now going to read to you an increasingly obvious list of comments about what this is and for the sheer unity of it. I'm going to play a song that everyone can agree is beautiful. Andrea Bocelli's performance of Conte Partiro. Mm. (laughs) And I will read out a series of comments over this and you will see how the British public came together over this. There's quite a lot at the start of this. It's live. (laughs) It's not even in the building yet. (laughs) I feel like live performances are harder for people to like Ooh. get copyright strikes on us That's or whatever true. happens. It's like they can't prove he's not here he right here with us. Andrea Bocelli. <clears throat> this is an open letter from the British public to Toby Carvery. It takes longer, I remember. All right, pump it, Andrea. No! This is an abomination. Lock them up and throw away the keys. It's an embarrassment! No! This is out of order. I audibly gasped. This is horrific. (laughs) What the hell are you doing? What kind of fresh hell is this? <laughs> For Christ's sake. Oh my God. God has left us. <laughs> oh good Jesus, what is this? This is wrong. I'm not sure how I feel about this. Unsure how to feel about this. I don't know how to feel about this. How do we feel about this? <laughs> that looks rank. <laughs> Not for me. Maybe younger people. Curry one day a week is my suggestion. Hello, police. I'd like to report a hate crime. <laughs> You've absolutely destroyed it. <laughs> Toby, you be smoking something. Whoever came up with this should be publicly flogged. No, definitely not. No beef? No onion gravy? Not even if it were free. Is this some kind of sick joke? What have you done? This is a step too far. A disgrace to the Yorkshire pudding. 
Try doing something simple, like serving new potatoes as well as mash and roasties, then we can eat there with our daughter, who will only eat new potatoes. That's how you improve something. This is a really stupid thing to do to the British cultural inheritance of the Yorkshire pudding. How dare they? Well, that's ruined a great British traditional roast compliment. Your Yorkshire's taste of oil! <laughs> no, 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 please stop. How does this work? Call me old fashioned, but I like my Yorkshire pudding with roast beef. I am open minded, but I think that this is a little bit too out there. <laughs> bit weird. You can't just put anything in a Yorkshire pudding. It needs to actually go with it. <laughs> that does not look good. You need gravy, onions, and meat, preferably beef. Leave Yorkshire puddings alone. They go with roast beef only. Stop messing about with food. <laughs> Tried it. Cheese makes the Yorkie full of grease. <laughs> Fusion food disaster. So, we've gone from Tex-Mex to Eng-Mex. <laughs> Lol. My two favorite food, but not put together. Dear Toby Carvery, you clearly know nothing about Yorkshire puddings. <laughs> Serving them for breakfast is not an improvement. Serving them as a wrap is not an improvement. Serving them with bloody Doritos is not an improvement. Yorkshire puddings are made to hold gravy, nothing else. <laughs> Looks Ming, who wants a dry Yorkshire pudding stuff with crisps? <laughs> That, my friends, is a response to Toby Carvery's edition of the Nachos in a Yorkie menu item. £4.99 on the lunch menu at all Toby Carvery's right now. Beautiful. Is that a big old Yorkie, though? It's like... It, they present it as big Yorkie with very high sides, which I think is almost... With, but with a low bottom, which is almost impossible to make. Mm. High sides, how can the bottom be any lower than the plate? Exactly. Well, um, no. The, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> Mary Poppins Yorkshire. <laughs> they stick it right. Yeah, they, they've got a sort of Japanese shabu shabu style <laughs> drop in the table so you can put your Yorkie in it. Uh, but yeah, it really brought everyone together in thinking it's fucking gross. And it is. If you look at it, no thank you. Mm. So that's it. Britain is back. Britain's back, baby. <laughs> and it's all thanks to Toby Carver. Fuck you, Mexico. Get out of our food. And now it's time for Steve's regular feature. Steve's how to pick the perfect cryptic cryptic poo. Now it's time for Steve's regular feature. How to pick the cryptic poo. <laughs> I, yeah, we heard it the first time. <laughs> how to pick the perfect Christmas tree. <gasps> I need to know this. It's now December the, season. the third, Steve. We've already got ours up. What if it's wrong? Well, just go ahead. Have you got your Christmas? Have you got your Christmas tree? Up? Yeah, we decked it out. <laughs> I almost said it like a normal person. We got them ten quid stringer light, light bulbs from Wilco's. They're mm -hmm. very nice. Color changing. Turn them all on. They all come in the same color, which I didn't like at first. But luckily, they're so badly phased that they all go out of sync. Quite quickly. <laughs> that's, so, great. that's great. Good. Well done, Wilk. <laughs> Wilco, you good lads. <laughs> Maybe deliberately imprecisely phased. Perhaps. Mm. Yes, and there's no control, so you don't end up. It doesn't go cycling through all this rapid flashing bombs. Oh, I hate that! <gasps> Living hell. <laughs> well, did you get a real Christmas tree or a we've, false Christmas tree? It doesn't we've exist. We've had our Christmas tree from last year out in the back garden all year, and it's lived. So we've got it back in. That is the most eco-friendly way to have a Christmas tree. Did you know that? Hey. <laughs> Guessed it probably was. You should have seen the amount of fucking water he dumped on it. It's <laughs> a yeah. disgrace. All the rare waters, all, all the yeah. rich minerals. <laughs> you did have to like kick some squirrels out of it as well. Oh, to fucking it broke in. their necks and fucking emptied the blood onto his spine. It's, it's hungry. <laughs> Get off my fucking tree! You say as you thrash a squirrel against a branch using its own 
tail as a handle for the squirrel. <laughs> you looked gra- you look gradually more and more horrified by your own image. <laughs> Uh, as you all know, there are eight simple rules for picking out the perfect Christmas tree. Mm-hmm. They'll always try and they push the dud trees to the front, don't they? They want to get rid of the shit Christmas trees. And they'll try and usher you towards the the, the shitty trees, the ones they want to offload on, on, on people. But no, yeah. yeah, if you just simply follow my eight rules, you will come away with the perfect Christmas tree. For this year's Christmas. Are you, are you going <laughs> to uh, identify what, you know, the the itinerary of what makes up a perfect Christmas tree? I'm going to give you eight But that's tips. tips to get it. But how do I know I've got it if I don't know what like, it is? These are the characteristics of the perfect <sighs> Christmas tree. Does that make sense define to you? Define your terms. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know I'm getting good content, man. People are paying for this shit. I think everyone else followed what was bound to happen. Yeah, but you, society needs people like me. <laughs> Number one, big. The bigger the better. Get a Christmas tree so goddamn big it brushes against the ceiling. If you can't find a big one, just get a small or medium-sized one and stand really close to it. (laughs) Two, good income. Make sure your Christmas tree has high earning potential and a stable (laughs) career in programming or design. If your Christmas tree isn't pulling down six figures, can it even call itself a Christmas tree? Three, drives a car. There's nothing more pathetic than a Christmas tree that doesn't drive it around in its own car. So you have to drive it around to all of its appointments. Um, <laughs> hello, you've got things to do. Check that your Christmas tree has a driving license. Four, a full head of long blonde hair. <laughs> if your Christmas tree doesn't have a full head of luscious blonde hair all the way down to the floor, say no thank you, honey, and walk right on out of there. If it has hair that looks dry or damaged... Toss it some L'Oreal Elvive and try to make it work. (laughs) Five, good needles. Gently grab the inside of a branch and pull your hand towards you. The needles should stay on the tree. Six, fresh (laughs) trunk. (laughs) The trunk should have a slight stickiness to it. Bend the needle in half with your fingers. Fresh fir needles should snap while fresh pine needles bend and should not break. Seven, even coloration. Some types of Christmas trees will go from deep rich green to a dull grey green if they get too dried out. It's best to err on the side of caution and pick the greenest tree that you can find. 8. Horny. You want a Christmas tree that's constantly down to fuck. Get a Christmas tree that wants to fuck you every time you walk into the room, even though there are children around. Can I... Do I need to neg it? Do I need to neg my Christmas tree? Yeah. Say things like, baby, I like... (laughs) Deciduous trees, <laughs> normally. <laughs> normally. Pretty brave branch distribution for an evergreen. <laughs> that will also work. Great. You'll be batting the Christmas trees away with your mm-hmm. negging tactics. You'll be like Mrs. Brown's from Mrs. Brown's Boys in that Christmas episode where she's inside the tree and it's spinning around. <laughs> you just made that show sound really good. That's th- occasionally. It's something you can watch with your parents, and it shuts the fuckers up. (laughs) Genuinely learned something there. I'm going to go. I've got a Christmas tree, but I'm going home to check it. Check how green it is. And if it's bits break. Stickiness. Yeah. Pulling your hand down. Sticky bit break. Mine is not that big, but it was that big last year. That's really good. It's, it's it's, It's baby. Did it? So did it grow roots, or did you? We just... had to. We put it in a pot and we changed it into a bigger pot halfway through the year because cool. it really fucking liked summer. There was a point where it just went, oh, I was so tired. So we put loads of water and it went. Poof. It was just shedding needles so it could go. Whoa. You don't think of Christmas trees as enjoying summer? No. If you think of them more like polar bears, like they just go. Oh no, don't. Get... Oh no. <laughs> <It's bloody laughs> <hell. laughs> this is really hot. <laughs> Thank you. What am I going to do? Die? <laughs> no, I guess I'm just going to have to put up with it. Titty titty bum bum. Titty titty bum. Titty bum bum. Titty bum. Titty titty bum. Good man is my uh, way of good man uh, talking to uh, men I perceive as masculine and proud in their masculinity in the pub. Good man. And then they walk off thinking, yeah, maybe I am a good man. Good man. Maybe I won't hurt anyone today. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Uh, oh, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know my own strength. <laughs> I tried to hug it, but I killed it. <laughs> like, 
Oi, oi, oi. Right. So I don't know if you've all are up to speed onto this, but yesterday I had a very embarrassed message from one of our readers mm-hmm. and a, a patron who has been thanked more than once in yeah. a, our post feature epitaph. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's Nick Nick Nicholas Popper Constantinou who is so beloved that he got his own jingle. Yeah. And um, he is, his little embarrassed message was, I've given you too much. How? On the old, um, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. My question to him was, is this something that I need to warn other Patreons about? Or are you unique in your ability to fuck it up, Nick? <laughs> or was this a reaction to hearing a recent episode? Go, mm, I've definitely given them too much. <laughs> I've given too much for that. <laughs> Yeah, so maybe you can have your money back, but only if I can pump this for fucking content. <laughs> you wouldn't walk up to a homeless person and say, Ooh, sorry, that was a 20. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Oh, I can't need that back, actually. Could you break that for me? I think, I think this might be a genuine podcast first. I can't think of any other podcast that would take would be asked to give some money back to its loyal fan base and then make fun of them for it <laughs> on the same podcast. To make it clear, we did give him his money back. Yeah, he's got his money back. Have we back. done it? All right, good. Yeah, and everyone else listening, you can't have your money, but you've given it to us now. Are You're- you called Papa Constantinou? Is Don't your name as good as Papa Constantinou? No? You need not allowed. nine syllables in two of your names. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or you get fuck. You get rock all. <laughs> so, here we go. So, if we can go down to... Um, basically, I've written a little script in response. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you can just imagine yourself uh, on Christmas Eve, mm-hmm. um, there are lines in the script that I've realised do point to the fact that it's not on Christmas Eve. But if you could just work them into... A time travel narrative of your own devisation. Good. I was really worried you were going to ask us to improv how to no, make them the back re- into Christmas Eve. readers use their minds. Thank God. All right. <clears throat> so, oh, hello there. If it isn't Nicholas Papa Constantinou. Oh, Mr. Log, my fingertips are ever so cold from all the weather outside. Can I warm them on your radiator before I start my back-breaking stint in the Patreon mines? No! My walnuts are roasting on that radiator, and I don't want your pissy mittens rehydrating them with mitten piss. <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right, sir. Is this absolute creamy corner bothering you? God, you horrid little tyke. Makes my blood and spit mingle. Oh, well, thank you for your consideration in any event, good sirs. I shall begin my shift. Too right. We don't get just enough money to make it worth bothering with this podcast without every Patreon dollar you can dig up going straight into our banks where we keep it. (laughs) And now to swill some tawny port around my mouth to soak up the tar from these very expensive cigars. And I shall plug my nose with roasted walnuts to disguise the smell of the sherry vomit I did in the fireplace. (laughs) Ah, the homely smell of steaming alcoholic puke. Always makes me feel ever so sleepy. Yes, and uh, this wet, vomity mess has a particularly soporific oh, bouquet. Sirs, sirs, I've, I've finished my 14 days shift underground saying, if you enjoyed this, please feel free to chuck us some chump change into a Blue Yeti microphone. And something terrible happened! What? You didn't allude to the low quality of the podcast, did you? And you'd better not have done a cheeky side gig for NordVPN, you greedy little shit. No, no, sirs. It's just that I I love you so much. You're my favourite podcast and you're ever so nice, so I tried to give you $20. But and the Patreon website is so tricky to a man of my childlike naivete, and I gave you $60 by accident. In what perverse mirror universe is that bad news? Well, this is wonderful. <laughs> well, you've definitely earned your five minutes weep in the staircase. Do you want me to lick the delicious snot off your face while you sob, Nicholas? That's very kind, sir, but I need to spend that money on clamps and clips for my child, who is just a ball of bones that we're trying to pull limbs out of for Christmas. My wife would love it if we'd got a forearm out before the general election. You can't just give us something and then ask for it back! How would you like it if I put my fingers in your mouth, only to pull them out again and wag them at you like you'd been naughty? 
If that'd make Sir happy... Get out of my sight, you grotesque flannel! Yes, you grotesque flannel that we've found down the back of a cabinet! Flannel that has dried into an arcane shape! Get out of our house! Uh, one more thing, sir. There was, a, there was a ghost in the mines, and he said if you didn't give me the money back, you should expect a visit from anywhere up to three ghosts. But likely mm, one or two, because, you know... Well, yes, three ghosts does sound like a lot of effort. Why didn't he want to tell us himself? Isn't a ghost delegating a haunting to a living person poor casting? He just couldn't be bothered. I think he was bored of the format. Well, that's absolutely fair enough. Especially when you're not actually one of the main ghosts yourselves. Ooh, you're going to see some ghosts tonight? Well, no shit, mate. <laughs> I'm going to dress up like a ghostbuster. That'll shit them up. Oh, this is going to be great. But first, let's have a big glass of sherry and a nap. <laughs> yes. Oh. Let's take great big huffs oh. of the fireplace. <clears throat> Just... <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yes. I'm Michael Burke, host of Radio 4's Moral Maze, and I'm here to convince you that you should give Nicholas Papa Constantinou his money back. Go on then, dickhead. Take your best shot. This money was given to you as the result of an honest error. At its very simplest, this ethical quandary is solved with an application of the golden rule that runs through all religious systems. You too are to do unto others as you too would like them to do unto you too, too. <laughs> But we don't have to give it back, though, because it's ours now. There can be no morality when there is no choice. Oh, that's good, because I want to keep the money. Also, perhaps it's morally right for us to keep the money. Have you considered that Nicholas Papa Constantinou was going to spend it on a big bowl of lady drowning custard? What? What's lady drowning custard? Custard you drown women in, you fucking idiot! <laughs> Wait a minute. I can't even see through you. Are you alive at all? Jeez Louise, what's a guy gonna do to get hot in around here? <laughs> yeah, the, the, the ghosts couldn't be asked. They're bored with the format. Fair. That's absolutely fair. So this year they thought, fuck it, send hosts instead. Only a G shy of a ghost. Close enough <laughs> when you don't give a shit. No complaints here. That is acceptable. And on top of that, they said they'd let me get to second base with the ghost of Marilyn Monroe if I literally did them a solid. So if we give Nick his money back, you can motorboat Marilyn Monroe's tits. Oh, Fucking hell, I hope so. I, I thought second base was just poking them with your index finger. Well, well, well. Well, now you've muddied the waters, haven't you? We don't know if Marilyn Monroe wants your mucky paws all over her ba ba pa 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 pas We cannot be complicit in such vulgar boob bargains. Bad luck, Burke. We're keeping the money and the moral high ground. <laughs> ah! All right, I'll leave now, but there are still two more hosts yet to visit you tonight. Excellent. Well, oh, let's do that thing where we go to sleep again. <laughs> What's that? Oh, I'll get it. I'll pour another schooner of sherry. Steve? There's a load of flowers at the door. Let me see. Oh, it's a host of golden daffodils. Oh, yeah. Like off from the poem about that cloud that had legs. Oh, isn't that nice? You know what? Looking at those daffodils makes me want to give Nicholas's money back. Hmm. Let's do it. Let's do it to nurture a sense of trust with our readers, whom we have grown to love. Good service inspires loyalty, and so makes good business sense after all. And if we do it quietly, and don't make a big song and dance about it, it'll be a quiet act of kindness with no theatrical, attention-seeking self-interest. Yes. Yes, it would be that. The ultimate moral good. Exactly what we have done just now. Cancel the third host, lads. You win. The end. And that's why it's important to be a moral person. Yeah. I'm very glad I recorded that conversation and uh, play it to our readers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody tell me where my features gone, my regular feature. Thanks so much for joining us for regular features. If you were moved by that last feature to give us money that you don't want back, it's easy to do it at www.patreon.com slash regular features. It enters you into a special echelon of reader 
where you might get a feature written about you. <laughs> if you decide if, you want your money back. If you're, <laughs> if you're rude. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nick is a love. Oh, I need to clarify that. I have said it before, but Nicholas Papakonstantinu is an absolute doll. Gem. But we are down forty dollars, so we need your cash. <laughs> Bring up. it in. We've we've made some pretty hefty credit card charges. <laughs> I would like to shout out some of our most recent patrons. I want to yes. say some of, I mean all of. We have three new patrons this week. <gasps> Bumper. Three new and improved. Improved. Shut Why don't you tell me a little fact? About these people. I hate this. On, no. the, on the spot. On the spot. <laughs> Theo Ellis. I shouldn't trust you guys. Well, no. <laughs> we can, well, you, it's your fault for doing it all the time. It is is, is the, his name Theo Ellis or the O Ellis? It's Theo Ellis. <laughs> You're not clarifying a thing here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, for one, I met Theo Ellis on a barge in the 1990s travelling from Manchester to Stockport and he was absolutely inappropriate <laughs> the, way, the way he looked at me What? You sound like John Collins <laughs> Christian Francis Francis of Assisi was in fact Christian Enjoy yourselves <laughs> Nice I did it and Are you Har- calling him a sissy? <laughs> <laughs> Harvey Pixel I like how he gets smaller with every generation <laughs> Great. That was, a, that was well worth it. I could see Look, no one listens to this bit anyway. It's fine. We don't have to redo it. We always redo it. <laughs> we could just redo it without trying to put the facts in. Oh, we could do it like, oh, you've been visited by three ghosts of Patreon, past, present, and future. We should have done it like that. There was three of them. It was built in, baked into the format. Let's but... just pretend it happened. <laughs> yeah. Come back next week. Well, we'll have more regular features just for you. And you. Yeah, you know who you are. Not you, though. Stop listening. (laughs) Fuck off! (laughs)